Hey gang, this is one from the Bite Dead team. As always, I'm joined by Ryan and Keith, and this is our first ever Superstar Spotlight. We, with the square round tables, you know, we talk about WWE then versus now, veterans and wrestling, and so much more. But let's take our time slowly and just talk about the careers of those guys that maybe they've either closed out their careers, or we know that maybe the, the best parts of their careers are maybe in the past. By the way, if you go to the, the description box below. We have a playlist of Randy Orton stuff that you can play in the background while we're talking. You can also check out part two right here on the channel where we talk about Rated RKO and tons more. But let's just sit back and talk about the origins of Randy Orton. And most importantly, taking it to you first, Mr. Poshik. What would you say, what impact Randy Orton overall had in your WWE watching experience? For a very, very long time, I would say the con a considerable amount of his career, Randy Orton was my favorite wrestler on the roster. It uh, basically went from Triple H to Randy Orton. I'm a very evolution-centric person, I guess. But no, I've until recently, I have very much enjoyed Randy Orton's character. So about uh, what about you, Ryan, in terms of... Randy, not just now, because I know if we talk about current Randy, maybe it can be a different story, but we basically grew up watching Randy's career, the three of us here. Mm -hmm. So how, what, would the, what was that like for you? Uh, there, very much like Keith, there was a point in time where Randy Orton was probably my favorite wrestler. Um, and I've always thought of him as, you know, just one of, he's just a, one of the most solid guys you could have on a roster. Like, he he's never I don't I don't want to get too much to do it but it's like you know he was not like the guy but he's still like the guy you want to have he's a very solid two or three the entire time it, it, yes yeah basically basically whenever Randy was involved in something you cared about it or or you saw the potential in the situation where you know it's kind of funny in my case Randy Orton. I accidentally watched his debut match. I'll never forget it. I was in Florida at a family member's house watching SmackDown. Hardcore Holly's in the ring, and out comes this young up-and-comer called Randy Orton in, like, uh, short blue pants and all these things. And I'm just <laughs> thinking, it's a guy with travel tattoos next. But then he beat Hardcore Holly in his debut match. Uh, how early was your, your Randy Orton watching experience? Did you watch him since day one, since Evolution? I kind of started a little later in that respect. Like, I didn't really see him a lot on SmackDown. My one, like, very, very uh, in-mind memory is the time where he did the crossbody to Brock Lesnar, and then Brock Lesnar caught him, rolled over, and F5'd him. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember that. But other than that, like, even with the Orton News Network stuff, I don't remember very much of it. I actually missed his first little run. Was it, like, 2002, I believe? Yeah, 2002, yeah. yeah. My yeah. first... Uh, anything like my first intro like introduction to Randy Orton was actually was it Here Comes the Pain was that the first game he was in or was yeah. it Shut Your Mouth <laughs> Here Comes the Pain yeah Here Comes the Pain was the first time I was like oh that's Randy Orton uh, and he looked and he looked like a huge <laughs> scrub in that game by the way um, but yeah it wasn't until like uh, you know after he came back from the injury is when I actually saw like Randy Orton on WWE television. Yeah, just for context, so basically Randy Orton comes in as a baby face, super generic. I mean, his finisher was the overdrive, which, just look it up on YouTube, a lot of guys, way too many guys have had that move as a finisher, and in a very short time, he got a shoulder injury, so WWE's way of keeping him active was doing the RNN, the Randy News Network, network just sort of keeping, you know, an update on his condition and all that. And that was their way of sort of keeping him active. And it wasn't really until Evolution sort of started being rumored that he was brought into the picture. You know, turned as a bad guy, and then there were rumors. You know, is he going to be with Triple H? Ric Flair's talking to this third-generation superstar. Obviously, Cowboy Bob Orton references there. So in that stage of his career, you see Triple H. You know, we've grown up with him in some way or shape or form. You know, DX, you see this potential stable that's about to happen and that Randy Orton's going to be involved. Were you okay with that? Were you a little bit worried? Because obviously we know next to nothing about him. What was your thought in that time? Let's at take first, it to Keith. At first, yeah. it was yeah. a little weird because it kind of, he felt very out of place. Like it was a very, they're going all in on Randy Orton on this one, putting him with Flair and Triple H. It kind of felt like it was an all in bet. But after a couple of weeks, it really started picking up steam. Like this is, 
in this time period, that's when I feel like Randy Orton found Randy Orton. That's really what like laid the groundwork for the rest of his career. And uh, this was the birth of the RKO in this time, if I remember correctly. Yeah, a little bit soon after, during Evolution, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, no, I I felt like he really picked up his sea legs in this point, started having great matches with people, uh, and yeah. What about you, Ryan? Did you immediately take into Randy? Because obviously, this doesn't happen often. You know, think throughout our, our entire WWE career, you can pinpoint, you know, The Shield, John Cena. There's a couple of guys where you see that they're going really all hard on him. Uh, Drew McIntyre was an example, but that turned out elsewhere. So what about Randy? Uh, what I was thinking at that time was, I was like, who the heck is this guy? He's just that <laughs> guy from the video game. Like, And, and by that yeah, point yeah. in the video game, he was like on the same level as like John Stasiak or whatever. <laughs> but like... Um, yeah, Sean but when Stasiak. You're, what? Sean, Sean Stasiak. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> that, Planet Stasiak. That, yeah, everything man. you need to say, really. <laughs> <laughs> I got his name wrong. That's how much he was important. Anyway... Um, when you pair him with like Ric Flair and Triple H, it instantly makes you pay attention, especially during that time where Triple H was like starting his reign of terror and was like the guy. So if you're with Triple H, then uh, things are going to go pretty well for you. Plus, there was also a fourth member of Evolution we didn't really talk about, and that's Batista. And at that point in, in their careers, Randy Orton was developing a lot faster than Batista. So I think by proxy, that made him look way better than, uh, than he probably was at that point. That was something I actually wanted to bring up since you've essentially answered it. But Randy Orton was the third Evolution member. Then Batista was sort of rumored. Then he beat down Kane. So that's the fourth member. So you got two guys. You know, let alone one guy is hard enough to, to get over or you see that potential. But you have two guys that are completely different. Originally was supposed to be Mar Jindrak instead of Batista. That's a, that, that, that's just unique. <laughs> so who was your favorite between those two? Who did you think realistically was going to be the long-term guy in the company? I thought it was going to be Orton at that time. Like this is the time where Orton started becoming my favorite wrestler on the roster. So Orton by a mile at that point. Yeah, at that point in time, there wasn't many people who were going to say Batista. It was almost <laughs> universally Orton. Yeah, same. In my case, that's where sort of the dirt sheet stuff started getting to me in the in the way that you saw the potential in Randy, but at the same time, Batista's this big muscular guy. And if you look at the WWE in that point, they were getting a lot of bigger guys. You know, later on, we got Bobby Lashley a couple of years later. So bigger bill guys. But yeah, ultimately, Randy got a huge push. And that brings us to the legend killer. You know, he was still in evolution. He won the Intercontinental Championship. And I think that this is when you really saw there's something in here. This is not just evolution, Randy. Like, this is the next guy in the company. You know, started taking out guys like Harley Race, RVD. But I think it wasn't until Backlash 2004, the match that we've all watched a couple times one a of the great greatest match. matches of all time, as far as Easily. I'm concerned. Mick Foley even said it was his favorite match, uh, one of his favorite matches. So Mick Foley versus Randy Orton. Wh what effect did that match have in you? Because just for reference, keep in mind, Randy Orton is a good-looking guy. Usually those guys don't get all bloodied up. But at that point in time, he, he pulled it off. At that point, that's when you started to really see, like, oh, wow, this Randy Orton kid, he can really go. Because up until that point, he even though he was the legend killer, he didn't really interact all that much with the legends. It was like a quick segment, take them out, on to the next one, on to the next one. Mick Foley really legitimized that and made that a thing. And like we said, they had an absolutely incredible match. And I think by doing that, he really legitimized Randy Orton as somebody that really could realistically carry the WWE into the next generation. It, it definitely made a lot of people take notice. And the whole, like, legend thing, because, I mean, we've seen legends show up and put over new guys all the time. But I think the whole legend killer thing, like, Orton made it his own. He made mm -hmm. it cool to beat up legends. It when, actually like, worked that time. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes, you know, a new guy has a match with Jim Duggan and you're just like, uh. Uh. But, like, the legend killer thing was really exciting. And, like I said, when he, like, was doing the thumbtacks and the barbed wire, it's like, you know what? That makes people take notice. It got people talking. You know, people were talking about a, uh, you know, a Randy Orton match. And Mick Foley obviously did a lot to help that. No, and 
the point that you're mentioning is something that's always been in WWE. How many guys have always said they're the future of the company? Like, they are the next top star. Yet, for whatever reason, just everything clicked about Randy, especially during Legend Killer. You know, he had the RKO, which at the beginning, I remember a lot of people were complaining it looked too much like the Diamond Cutter, but that slowly came to be his own. And then, I know, how many t-shirts featuring the Randy Orton Legend Killer pose? I think that is also another detail. He found a trademark that to this day he he still does. How, how many of you guys did the Legend Killer post? Let's be honest here. Come on now. <laughs> well, question for a question. At that time, was there anything cooler than Randy Orton on the stage doing the Legend Killer pose and then the pyro? The like, pyro, yeah. The pyro going behind him. That was the coolest thing. And probably there's not a lot going on right now that even comes close to that. Good point. Yeah, if you think about it, that that's changed. That really made him, which is another factor, like the entrance, the theme music, even though he, even though uh, he admitted himself that he didn't really like Burning My Light too much, but it just worked so well. Now, around this point, for every positive thing that we saw on TV, this is when the dirt sheets sort of, sort of started really talking about Randy a lot. You know, there were these rumors about... He's going to get fired because attitude problems. He did something in Candace Michelle's bag. There's all <laughs> these controversial topics. Now, for us, I know we even had arguments, especially you and, me, uh, you and me, Keith, back in the day regarding the rumors. Did that have any impact or any concern that that, that changed Randy Orton for you? Not at all. I was one of the people where I was just so sold on Orton that – I, be- I believe that even through all the negative, like, he would still rise to the top. Like, he was just too good for that to happen to Orton. So, I was still a true believer at that point. I think at that time I remember saying, if Orton punched me in the face, I would still be a fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so sure that would be true today. but <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. But at the time, like, or- Orton was, like, the cool heel. He was the cool heel. So um, it, it was really tough. To, like, despite all the negative stuff, you just wanted to see the good. You wanted to believe, oh, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. Just, you know, be, only because you like Orton. But obviously, he was beca- he was pretty much the only one standing in his own way as far as, like, his career goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of funny. In my case, Keith and I had a lot of arguments because I don't know why. I was, you I guess weren't I was a just true stupid. believer. <laughs> yeah, like I was a huge Randy fan, yet for whatever reason, this report started coming out. I'm like, he's a terrible human being. I don't want him on my TV then. I'm over him. And Batista number one, yes. So that was sort of <laughs> my thing. Why not? And just for quick context, we are 25 right now. Randy Orton around this point, 23 to 24. Evolution, Triple H, Ric Flair, Legend Killer, matches with Mick Foley. Makes you kind of depressed, doesn't it? And not just depressed, <laughs> but did you ever feel like this happened in, in another point in time? Even recently, this is a lot for one guy to take. You almost can't blame him, I guess, if he had an attitude problem backstage or something. The only person that you could really say came close was Brock Lesnar, and that's just because of an age thing. And Brock Lesnar is a freak of nature. That <laughs> hardly counts. So, yeah it's, yeah, it's difficult. Which leads us to then oh, well, inevitably. I guess, I guess sorry, sorry, what? dude. Uh, but, yeah, like, there was, like, Rene Dupree and those kind of guys, I guess you could say, kind of a similar but different situation. I, they didn't quite it, have the rocket underneath them, like, no. you know, Orton and Lesnar. As you can see. You could see, like, Lesnar left early because, I mean, you give a guy everything and what does he have left to accomplish? I mean, it was until it took like eight years for him to come back. Which is crazy when you think about everything Randy had up until this point. I mean, we haven't gotten to the world championship match. You know, let's get to 2004 now. Obviously, this is a groundbreaking year for him because... This is when all the rumors started piling up online. At some point, Evolution has to break up. When is this going to end inevitably? Randy Orton receives a title shot, and at SummerSlam 2004, he becomes a world heavyweight champion by pinning Chris Benoit. Clean, RKO, no cheap pin or anything like that. At 24, the youngest champion in WWE history. What was your reaction at that moment? As a true believer, it was very, very exciting. It was some. It was along the moments of like, yes, this is my guy. He did it. He um, everything that I thought was correct 
about Randy Orton. And for a very short period, it was incredible. Pretty much just that next night on Raw, and then everything went to hell. <laughs> a very, yeah. very short period. <laughs> yes. It was incredible. There was an amazing I mean, video package, and then after that, it just kind of all Yeah, because, I mean, it was very expected. I mean, we were really into the dirt sheets back then, and, like, even as maybe, you know, less news got out back then or whatever, but, like, that was still, like, heavily leaked that that was going to happen because they wanted to erase brock lesnar from the record books at the time because they were angry at him so orton kind of to his own detriment got kind of thrown into the title i think a little too early yeah and that's essentially the last topic here in the part one which is a lot happened because once again what do you do when you're the legend killer you beat down the legends all this, the, all these things. Eventually, in part two, we'll talk about the uh, the streak match that everybody thought maybe Randy was going to win. But in here, he became world champion, and then they felt the necessity to change everything about him. You know, he was a cocky guy, and then essentially he was mocking Triple H. <laughs> that <laughs> With infamous your cave, smile alone, the yeah. infamous caveman impression. <laughs> yeah. Who thought? Okay, just for quick context. So Randy Orton is champion on top of the world, and he feels the need to do like, huh, I'm Triple H. Triple H never spoke like that, and that's when you felt, oh, WWE is really trying to to change him. And that soured me a lot on Randy. What about you guys? Absolutely. It it also didn't help that, like, at the time, they did a lot of the whole, oh, like, let's just give Orton the title for three weeks and then just give it back to Triple H. You know, Mm -hmm. I I know Benoit had it before him, but it just felt like, oh, they tried something and then they just pulled it away. And it kind of, it almost made Orton look worse having, for having won the title. Exactly. It was a very, it was a very big fall from grace because you took everything cool from Orton because he was the champion. And then you took the championship from him as well. Like what, what is he left with at that point? And the answer was, you know, I take that back. There was one good thing that came out of that. That's really when the RKO came into its own, right? Like, that's when the whole out of nowhere thing yeah. started. So that was one positive thing, but everything else went to kaput. Which is really difficult because, as you mentioned, and a good observation, never thought about that. Before, the RKO was more expected, but when he actually became babyface, that's when it's like, oh, you know, how is he going to beat Triple H? It's going to come out of nowhere. And that yeah. slowly came to be that Randy. And But it sucks because youngest champion in history, but his first run, can you even pinpoint anything about it? I think that was the there point was where... There was a bad impression. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, everyone just remembers the Batista electric chair drop, basically, with Triple H doing the thumbs down. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And then they fought, like, two weeks later, and Triple H was champion. And then I, I think that was the, the concluding thought is that the conclusion, cl- concluding thought, oh, there my you. apologies, yeah, is that you could tell Divity was just sort of going week by week. What's going to happen with Randy? And it came to the point where I don't know who Randy is because I remember myself back then. Is he face or heel? Because I don't like this guy, but they're telling me to like him. So do I like Triple H now? I have no idea. So before we conclude this, any last thoughts on Randy Orton, the face character, 2004? I think it was doomed from the get-go because it was Orton getting attacked and kind of like, oh, you, you're you supposed to feel bad because he got betrayed. Whereas, uh, you know, you can compare what they did with Batista leaving Evolution, where he was the instigator. He's the one who rebelled, and it was just so much more exciting. So I feel like the launch pad for Orton was just not nearly as well done as Batista's. And part of the greatness of Batista's probably because of Orton's failure is what led Absolutely. to his success. And I mean, just think about it from a character standpoint, how it's a complete 180 from what Orton was. Like everything that Triple H did to Orton at that point and you were supposed to feel bad about was everything Orton did in his career up to that point. So it's like, hey, now that's happening to me, feel bad for me style thing. It just, it wasn't, it was a, it was a fumble. Yeah, it's almost like they tried to overshadow what they did with Randy with Batista, because if you think about it, they did the same thing. 
And, and as a matter of fact, the entire storyline was like, are you going to do to me what you did to Randy? Yeah. So Randy just went from being at the top of the food chain to being Batista's the third guy. Batista's like, plot, basically. Yeah. So to those watching, what was your favorite Randy Orton moment up to this point? Let us know by checking out the comment section. Remember, the podcast is available every single Tuesday right here on the channel subscribe you know hit that thumbs up and definitely check out part two that's available right here on the channel as well as a ton of reviews so until next time thanks for watching and we'll be back with a ton more stuff right here on bite that